Chevrolet SSR has a knack for attracting attention. Some things just do. A bear cuddling with a deer. Anything fluorescent orange. Car and driver poetry. Oh, wait, we actually have that in upfront this month, in case you missed it. Extraordinary things seem to get extraordinary reactions. Chevrolet's all-new Super Sport Roadster is one of those extraordinary things. Part Roadster, part truck, and part Van Holland, it's a retro Yankee wrapped in concept car spandex. The Bowtie Bunch unveiled the SSR Concept 3 and a half years ago at the 2000 Detroit Auto Show, where reaction to the truck was beyond positive. Us car guys even liked it so much that we put it on our April 2000 cover. Chevy quickly got the hint, build it, and they will come. For 2003, Chevy hopes 3,500 Americans will come, followed by 14,000 to 15,000 in 04. We give Chevy its due props for keeping the SSR's final design very close to the concepts, maintaining the show truck's wild edginess as well as its heritage to 1947-53 Chevy trucks. Designed entirely on computer, the Neo Classic SSR features the concept's huge flared fenders, rakish windshield, and 19 and 20 inch wheels front and rear, respectively, all of which make it hard to distinguish the show and street versions. There are minor differences, of course, such as the relocation of the side mirrors from the concept's upper A pillars to the production's doors, the addition of side markers, and the removal of the sweeping metallic band from the concept's tailgate. But otherwise, it's as if Chevy designers were afforded the luxury of telling the engineers, all done, gone fishing. Although it's not surprising to see the big wheels on the production vehicle, after all, many cars roll on dubs these days it is surprising, impressive really, that the gargantuan fenders made it to the assembly line. Developed by Fuji Diatech Corporation, the fenders are made using deep draw grade 5 steel in a process called inverted toggle draw, which stamps the fenders with as much as 18 inches of draw, or depth, of the formed area. Chevy claims the process is cost effective, although we have our doubts, considering the SSR opens at $41,995 while using cost-cutting corporate underpinnings. Pricey or not, we like the fender's steroidal effect, and that they can be used for picnics, tanning hides, and even demonstrating ginsunas. Chevy opted to use steel sheet metal rather than composite panels like the ones on the Corvette because they're easier to paint match and they make for a stiffer structure. And like the vet, the SSR uses hydroformed steel side rails to anchor its frame. For the SSR's frame, Chevy started with a Trailblazer EXT box unit, cut 13 inches from the midsection and about 4 inches from the front end, and then welded it back together and added enough cross members to total it. But whereas a Corvette convertible feels as solid as granite, the SSR resides more on the pumice end of the spectrum and as a result suffers more shakes and shimmies over cratered Michigan roads. The structure feels stiffer than a T-Bird's and noticeably tauter than a Prowler's, but it trails the best convertibles by a fair margin. The SSR borrows much more than just its frame from the Trailblazer. Chevy's midsize sport youth also donates its 5.3-liter V8 engine, 4-speed automatic, rack and pinion steering system, 4-wheel disc brakes, and unequal length control arm front and 5-link solid axle rear suspensions. Compared with the Trailblazer EXT, the SSR presses the pavement with 300 horsepower and 331 pound-feet of torque, versus 290 and 325, a faster 16.0 colon 1 steering ratio, versus 18.5 colon 1, and a suspension tuned for Boulevard Cruising. We mention Boulevard Cruising because Chevy did over and over again. And for good reason. The SSR does indeed cruise with the best of them, be it at Vero or Venice Beach. At a 60 second stoplight, you have enough time to raise and lower the ASC built power retractable hardtop, which makes for a great icebreaker with any bikini babe who happens to be belating by. It drops via a center console mounted button, stacking neatly between the cab and cargo bed. The process is relatively quick, if a bit noisy, 
and allows enough time to feed the booming Bo Stereo some meatloaf. Cruising never came so good. Daniel Punt. We once planned a comparison test pitting the SSR against the Plymouth Prowler and Ford Thunderbird. Dissimilar as they are in primary ways, all are boulevard cruisers that appeal to the same senses mainly, visual. By the time we got an SSR, the Prowler was dead and the T-Bird had a date with the Gallows. That can't bode well for the SSR. There's value in a car that utterly confounds every passerby. But 49 grand for novelty. Beyond its concept car looks, the SSR has a leaky roof, a shaky structure, a 0 to 60 mph sprint no quicker than a Honda Accord sedans, and the world's cheesiest cup holder. And novelty is transitory. Just ask Chrysler and Ford. Tony Swan. The SSR looks cool, its top is the niftiest thing since the invention of origami, and it sounds way bitchin'. On the other hand, there's a lot of noise that's just noise, you can tow more with a minivan, and even moderate pavement ripples provoke a festival of chassis shutters. El Camino comparisons are inevitable, and as a former owner, there's one parallel I find undeniable. LC got poor marks as a passenger car and worse scores as a pickup. The SSR's cool quotient is higher, but that description is otherwise apt for this latter-day sequel. The distinction between niche market and novelty has always been vague. The SSR does nothing to clarify it. Steve Spence Be careful what you wish for, you just might get it. Everybody in the enthusiast press pleads with automakers to build these flamboyant show cars. Well, here it is, guys, a chance to put your money where your mouth is. The SSR has everything going for it but one very considerable problem, the money part. It needs to sell for the price of a regular truck, not the price of a Porsche Boxster. Chevy will say, of course, that it can't make a profit selling it for that, and there you have it, the concept car conundrum. Start by brooming the expensive folding roof. Stuff it with a bigger engine, and turn it into what it needs to be, a Camaro truck. There is one caveat, of course, and that's the spotlight that follows the SSR wherever it goes. If attention is what you're after, you need not visit any other showroom. A Ferrari 360 Spider is more exotic, but it can't touch the SSRs. What the heck is that? Magnetism. It attracts the kind of attention we'd expect to get chauffeuring SI swimsuit issue models around on a goodwill tour. It's a great way to boost your ego while catching some rays, but it's not exactly the car you want for making a quick beer run before the NASCAR race. Unless, that is, you want to play 20 questions with the 7-Eleven clerk. One afternoon we ventured from the boulevard to the back road, and quickly returned to the boulevard. Despite its 0.82G of stick on the skid pad, the SSR is wholeheartedly a cruiser, and not at all a curved carver. If you feel like teasing the wear bands on the huge Goodyear Eagle R's as, take the SSR, otherwise, leave it in the garage and go with the vet. Out on our woodsy 10BEST test circuit, every corner, braking zone, and transition was like a warning sign that read, 4,764 pounds slow down. There's simply too much weight to be sporty, much less super sporty. The heavy, soft steering doesn't help, either, nor does the bouncy ride that exposes the SSR's truck routes. Best to keep it on Main Street, where the steering and the ride are at home and where Bob Seeger will be cruising in his 0 to 60. No prob. The quarter mile. Absolutely. The former takes 7.0 seconds, the latter 15.4. Both are quick in light of the mass but slower than the 280 HP T-Bird at 6.5 and 15.0, August 2003, as well as the 253 HP Plymouth Prowler at 6.0 and 14.7, July 1998. If there's one thing we wish had been transferred from concept to production, it's the 6.0 liter engine. Why Chevy chose not to install the 345 HP LQ9 V8, which is the same size on the outside as the 5.3, is beyond us. 
powering the 5240-pound Silverado SS, June 2003, the 6.0 liter was good for 0 to 60 in 6.3 seconds and a quarter in 14.8, and it could conceivably knock a full second from the SSR's times. Moreover, a couple takes off would really justify and enforce the 86 dBA whale that accompanies full throttle acceleration. Benchmark off the Camaro SS's, the SSR's exhaust rumbles with hot rod promise, but without the guts to back it up, it's more roar than rat. If you're thinking of making the SSR your next boat hauler or couch transporter, think again. It can tow up to 2,500 pounds enough to pull a wave runner or a V-rod, Chevy points out and carry 24 cubic feet of cargo in the carpeted bed, both of which are unexpectedly low capacities from a rear drive, V8 powered pickup. But remember, this is a boulevard cruiser, and if you want a tow rig, Chevy's got a Suburban or Silverado with your name on it. We can't really see anyone buying the SSR to move a sectional or pull a bayliner, anyway, and who wants to maneuver a 20-foot trailer when picking up a blizzard at the drive through The SSR did manage a shorter stop from 70 to 0 miles per hour than the Prowler, requiring 185 versus 206 feet, and needed only two more feet than the T-Bird. But like the Trailblazers, the SSR's brake pedal exhibits a mushy feel that's similar to call waiting in that you wait, wait, then I am here. Let's talk. Clearer, more instant communication would be welcome, especially with the Harley in tow. A few other complaints, to our eyes, the SSR sits a bit high, exposing the frame side rails too much and accentuating the big wheels too little. Trying to access the seat adjustments on the sides of the lower bolsters is a test of finger malleability, because of their close proximity to the door panels. The passenger's footwell is a bit narrow, limiting room for big flip-flops, and certain angles and light conditions can make the instruments and signal lights hard to read. For SSR money, we can make strong arguments for other roadsters that offer more performance on the dollar. We can't, however, argue the SSR's bang for the buck on the boulevard, which could be used in a MasterCard ad. We hope the SSR meets a happier fate than the Prowler and the Thunderbird two retro-inspired niche roadsters that are dead and dying, respectively because no other car lets the good times roll in such an American way.